I'm Dr. Francis J. Kelly, the Grand Knight of St. John de Matha Council of the Knights of Columbus in Hyattsville, Maryland. I'm also a member of the Archbishop Michael J. Curley Assembly that meets in College Park, Maryland. They are fourth degree Knights of Columbus. Tonight we have a television program entitled The Blessings of a Large Catholic Family. And we have some nice young people here who are fostering and fathering and mothering large Catholic families and we want to see how they do it and the blessings that come to them from this wonderful work. And so I want to introduce first Teresa Lepofsky. Teresa? Hi Dr. Kelly. Uh, my husband and I have five children and we live in Hyattsville and we're in St. Mark's Parish. And we have Teresa, Teresa Sonsky. Correct. Correct. Hi doctor. Yeah. My husband and I just moved from Connecticut, or we just moved from Connecticut to Beltsville, Maryland, and we have six children, and we belong to St. Joseph's Parish in Beltsville. And Fred Heiselmeyer. Hi. Hi, we live in Glendale, Maryland, and my wife and I have seven children, um, two girls and five boys. Uh, you all seem to have uh, accepted the children that God has given you, and what do you enjoy most about your large families? We'll start with you, Fred. I think it's all the interaction and the, um, especially at the holidays, we can really appreciate the feast days and the holidays with, with a lot of the children. And it's also in, really nice to watch the children grow. You have so many different personalities and you see that coming out in each one of them. Um, sometimes similarities, sometimes very different. So the, the whole learning experience every day is something new, something different, and something joyful. And how about you, Teresa? Oh, Fred said a lot of things uh, that I was thinking, the, the just the different personalities with uh, each child. It's just extraordinary, and you just love each one of them for, you know, the blessings that they do have and that, you know, we receive them from God, and they're also, you know, wonderful. And just e each age, as they go through the different ages, is it's a learning experience, and it's a challenge, and it's, it's, it's exciting as they grow. And how about you, Trey? Yes, Trey? I feel similarly. Um, watching the children grow and seeing that each one is a gift from God. And just being open to life has allowed these children to come in and knowing that we're being asked to raise them and this is uh, a mandate uh, you know, uh, from God. And so we, I just I have a lot of joy just watching the kids grow and learn and, and whatnot. And what do you see as your goal in, in, in having your family? Uh, well, the main goal, my husband and I both said when we first got married was to get to heaven and then to have a large family and see, you know, we'll see how it comes. And so we're working together now um, to raise our family. Um, in the Catholic faith and to teach them that their goal is heaven, that life on earth is really short, that their child is short, their whole life is short, everything life is short, and that eternity is forever. So we want them, we want to be with them in heaven. So that's my goal. And how about you, Teresa? Um, yes, it's my calling, I guess, is to be a mother. And God has given me six children to raise and I've taken that to heart. And my husband and I are trying to do our best. It's not easy, but we do our best. And um, we learn with the children to, yes, yeah, stay in their Catholic faith. And the, uh, it's so important right now in today's, today's uh, 
the way today is, uh, the world is today, that they stay with their faith because that's what's going to save them. And we feel very strongly about that, and they'll realize it, and they'll take it with them as they become adults. And that's our goal, is to raise Catholic adults. And you, Fred? My wife and I help out with a, a pre k class, and this question always comes up. And the f as an individual, as a single person, the goal is always to get yourself to heaven. I mean, that's the end the finish line in the, in the game, in the race of life. Uh, when you get married, we teach that uh, you gain a second responsibility. You have to get your spouse to heaven. It's your responsibility there. And then as children come along, if you're, they're given by God, then your job is to get those souls to heaven as well. So there's a lot of a burden there, but uh, the rewards are very great. I mean, I, I love to go uh, project myself into the future there when I can be in heaven with God and all of my children there, enjoying all of this thing for all eternity. Well, that's a great uh, spiritual contemplation, actually, isn't it, to, to think about that? Oh. You know, I always think of it conditionally. I hope I get there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, there one thing to think about is uh, the economic situation. How can you afford to have the children that you have? Now, I hear this and I say, we're in the greatest prosperity of, the t of any century. How could people ask that question to begin with? But anyway, they do ask the question, so let me just ask that to you. Um, how can you afford it? Well, um, sometimes, you know, you think you can afford it. Uh, a lot of it's trust and a lot of it's planning. A lot of it's setting that budget and, and living the discipline of uh, following the budget. Um, it's, uh, I think there's a reward uh, now. And uh, we rely, we trust in God that he'll provide the food tomorrow just as he has today and for the past years that we've and, you know, raising the family, and we look upon that as God's blessing, Him taking care of us up to this point, and we trust that He'll take care of us in the future. And, and so it's living a budget and trust, and working hard. And Teresa, do you have any particular insights to that thought? Um, boy, just leaving your faith in God and knowing He'll, he'll take care of you. I mean, you just, you live by what you think is what you can, you know, your means, and don't go overboard. Uh, materialistic things, we try not to enforce that at all. We're thankful for the things that we do have ourselves, our family. And, you know, with the six kids, a lot of things get passed down, you know, to the next child, and you do what you can. And then when you get a little bit more, you thank God for what you do have, and you try to, you say, well, can we give back to you, too, for what you give to us? And um, it's a lot of hard work but it does work out with God's guidance and you leave it in His hands and He'll take care of you. So I have no problem with that at all. And you, Fred? I think the first thing is to take a look at yourself and understand what your requirements are. Um, do, we, do we gauge how expensive or how much it costs to, to raise a large family by earthly standards or by what's mm -hmm. really needed? Um, I think that to have a large family, you have to have a, you have to be very secure in yourself. You have to understand that there's a level of sacrifice there, that uh, you might not have that giant 48-inch entertainment center. Um, you know, a small TV might work or something like that. Um, so that's actually uh, the first level. The second is trust, uh, trust in God's providence. Um, like Teresa was saying, you know, it, He will always provide. Uh, he gave you the gifts of the children. Uh, they come with help from Him. So, I mean, whenever you get in a bind, you say, Lord, where's it coming from? You know, I don't have enough for the, the mortgage this month. Something's got to give. Um, pray. And I found, you know, in my professional life that that parlays over to that, that I can look back and I say, well, there's nothing that I did to drive where my career grew or when this contract popped up, when that happened. But in retrospect, it always happened at the right time. It always happened when we needed it. 